Hello Romas, this is a Romy here and welcome back to Changeling right here. <sighs> not understanding this fucking riddle because I surely do not. I mean, thankfully I had other friends uh, in our group that knew the answers. I surely didn't know any of the answers. There's so many parts of the poem that seem to point diff to different things. Quills of gizzling birds. I didn't know what a gizzling or geist was, or geese, I don't know. But I did know that ravens were often associated with magic and destiny, and they were birds. In that line about bringing strife, a group of ravens were called an unkindness. There was also a mention of fairy looms, and I wasn't totally sure what that meant, but fairies did have stronger association with some types of animals, like cows. Fairy cows were a big thing for some reason. <laughs> cows were also associated with deer and folklore, so maybe that was a moose web thingy. Moose and deer were uh, vaguely similar. But then all that stuff about weaving fate looms. The cr one creature I could think of that was related to those things in folklore and mythology was a spider. And gossamer could be a reference to cobwebs. Which one was it? You're running out of time. You may want to answer quickly, little lost changeling. I know, and stop calling me that. That's <laughs> his raised eyebrow. Oh, you guys can see the raised eyebrow, but look at, <laughs> look at his raised eyebrow. He's hurt. I don't even know if you guys saw him in the last episode. Oops, we didn't. I took a deep breath and just picked the one that made the most sense. Spider. I don't know. Spider? But of those three possibilities, the answer that made the most sense was spider. The answer is a spider or spiders, right? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because Elliot turns into spiders. Maybe, maybe that was a clue. <laughs> Elliot Fairy looked furious the moment the answer was out of my mouth, and my heart leaped. If they were mad, it definitely meant it was because I'd done something right. We answered your riddle and paid your price. I hope you know that according to your own rules, you have to let us through. Fine, I'll have, the, have to let you slide past this time, but I don't think you'll make it much further than this. None of you thought we'd make it even this far, so... I gave a little shrug. He scowled and shot me such a look of loathing that I almost took a step back. I wonder if you'll actually make it to the end in time with despair, or will you be too late? I can't wait to see. What's that? But he stepped into the knitting, knitted shadows and disappeared. Behind him, the wall melted, leaving the path open. Alright, at least we didn't lose anybody. Too late. Does that mean we have a time limit? Because no one said anything about that. Uh, Michiko, you might want to take a look at this. What is it, Allie? She had up her phone and balked when I was, when when saw how much time had passed. Seriously? I gripped my hand and stared down at the screen. It's Saturday night already. Holy fuck. Oh man. Mom and dad are probably freaking the heck out right now. I'm betting that time limit is the end of Samhain. Because all the gates will close. Not all of them, but most of them. And definitely the one we came through. Oh man, I can't believe we didn't think about that. So these challenges, all this mess, it's just a delay tactic, isn't it? Looks like it. I bit my lip and took a deep breath. I guess there's nothing to be done about it now. All we can do is try our best to hurry. I don't think we've particularly gone slowly. Well, let's not start then. Come on. I felt like we walked for a long time, just silently plodding forward. The echo of our footsteps gradually closed in, and we were suddenly no longer in the cave or the forest, but a wide hall. Allie and I both stopped, startled by the sudden change. This place was familiar. I wondered again how much, t of, how much of what we were seeing was even real. Had there ever been a cave or a forest? Had we been here the whole time? Or maybe even this place was fake? <laughs> we shouldn't stop. I know. Both of us were speaking quieter than before. It was so still. When it got quiet, when I wasn't thinking about things like stupid riddles or the fact that we had no idea how the time, how fast time was flowing outside, we didn't even know the time and fairy flowed at a steady pace. And now that we were here, we had no idea where Spencer and Ewan were. We had no idea how to find them, how to get them back. I couldn't help but wonder if it was the right thing for us to even be here. But if we hadn't come, no one else would have. Ugh. I tried to push through the thoughts from my head and just focus on walking because it's not like I had answers and it was too late to go back. We just had to get going and stay on our toes so we could handle whatever they threw at us. We just need to get to wherever this path is taking us. Hopefully not the huge ominous door up ahead because that just looked tr like trouble. We didn't make it that far anyway. No surprise. No further. <gasps> You're beautiful. Wow, she's beautiful. 
There weren't any shadows this time, just a calm voice that rang out as another face stepped from behind a pillar. Or a tree. It was still kind of hard to tell which. Kind of weird because Brenner herself is a fae, so now she has a fae fae doppelganger? The fuck? That fairy though, she looked unfamiliar. Wow. I'll say. I was almost disappointed Brenna wasn't with us to see this madness, but to be honest, with the looming with time limit and everything else happening, I was just too worried to be amused at this. We know the draw by now. We can't pass until you ask us some weird question to test our knowledge and all that. We're a little short on time, so how about we just get on with it? You're getting impatient. Be careful that you listen closely and don't make a mistake due to that impatience. A journey at sea in a boat like green pea. Like a green pea. Wedding food eaten by cat and owl. What? Cutlery used after mirrored by fowl. A giver of rings while someone else sings, and an instrument played on that boat. What are all of these things? Uh, what? I glanced at Allie, but she also seemed to be mulling it over still. Hmm. Now, the riddles typically involve mythology, literature, or animals. This definitely sounded like it was referred to a tale or maybe a rhyme. Cats and owls. I just thought of Brenna and Mark, to be honest. I might know what this one was referring to. If I was right, that meant the answer was... If it was a green pea... A pea green boat, then the wedding food had to be... Wait, what? Pies, right? They mentioned pies before. <laughs> Quince and mints eaten with a rinse bowl spoon. Mice and pies eaten with a pobble, pobble fork. Cake and steak eaten with a... Boy knife. I'm gonna go with the pie. Okay, I think I know the poem this was based on. I don't remember all the words, but it was an owl and a cat that sailed on a pea green boat and got married. They ate mice and pies with a pobble fork. The fake bread. <laughs> Fucking no! Give me a smug grin and clicked her tongue before I could stumble further along. I've been a little uncertainty. That was definitely a sign I was way off track, wasn't it? Damn. Oh, fuck. It was. Shit. Okay, the first time where I didn't get the answer correctly. This? I think this is a reference to the owl and the pussycat, which would make the wedding food mints and slices of quince. Kints? I don't know what that is. Is that cheese? Is that a mixture of food? Is that like a food that's like mixed with a bunch of different ingredients that looks like a pie? I'm thinking of a quiche, aren't I? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Which I ate with a rinsable spoon. They got the ring from a pig after the owl sang to the cat on the boat while playing guitar. The fairy clenched her hands, glaring at me. It wasn't nearly as unnerving as when the real Brenna glared, though. How did you know that? Hey, you're the one who asked a poetry question of someone who reads a lot. Damn, I need to do more reading then. The fairy let out a very brenna like kiss and melted back into the shadows of the pillar. The way was clearer again. That had been pretty easy. But with time running out, I couldn't celebrate. Allie and I shared a look. What do we do, Allie? Keep going forward? I don't think we have a choice. There's nothing down here but endless riddles and questions. The deeper into fairy we went, the more it felt like we'd never reached the end of all of this. At what point were we too far beyond our borders? Or maybe that's what they wanted, to lure us so deep into fairy we'd never find our way out again. Allie, we can't keep walking aimlessly. We have to find... I don't know where to look. I don't think we can do much but stay on the path and hope for the best. Yeah, well, this path doesn't seem to lead too many places. Oh my god, why are we arguing right now? And I wasn't sure I wanted to go in that door, even though it seemed like they were aiming for that. She grabbed my arm and pulled me a little closer, lowering her voice. Listen to me, Chico, I agree with you. We can't just go where they want us to go. And we don't have time for more of these stupid riddles. Now, without knowing how many more they're planning to throw our way. So what do we do? Leave the next riddle to me, okay? No! No, I cannot afford to lose you. You won't. Trust me. She gave me a distressingly devious grin. I have a plan. Is it normal to feel a wave of nausea when you say that? Hey, it's a good plan. Trust me on this one. I was definitely dubious about that. But what else could we do? We continued down the path, just waiting for another fairy to step out and block the way. Allie reached into her pocket, which made me very, very nervous. We agreed. We already agreed that there wasn't much good in attacking them or using magic. They had a freaking army. So, what was she planning? I didn't have to wait long to actually to find out, actually. There was a figure just up ahead and waiting for us. And, well, under different circumstances, I have been kind of amused. <gasps> Aww! She's so beautiful! Well, you could partially see her. Look how beautiful she is. Wow. Beautiful. 
Oi. I shot Ali a smirk, but she wasn't looking at me at all. Her hand was still in her pocket and she was smiling at the fairy, a terrifying smile. I could almost see the veins popping at her temple. Oh man, she is so pissed off. Ali was usually so laid back that you rarely saw her more than vaguely annoyed or irritated. This time she was furious. I hadn't seen her this mad in a really, really long time. Not that I blamed her. Looks like her famous patience finally wore out. The fake Ali opened up its mouth to speak, but Ali cut it off before it got a single word out. Sorry to interrupt, sorry, but we've done this five times already. We're a bit sick of this process, so if you don't mind, before we get started, I have a question for you. I hope you don't mind answering. The fairy looked a bit confused for a minute. This, this isn't the way it's supposed to go, right? <laughs> she looked behind her as she was expecting someone back there to reassure her we'd gone off script. Ali, what are you distressed? Um, I don't... It's just one simple question. Well, I guess. Ali smiled wide and then she pulled her hand out of her pocket. What is your policy on salt? Wait, what? What are you doing? The fairy's eyes went impossibly wide and suddenly, there was the sound of chattering and frantic whispering all around us as Ali opened her hand to reveal her, dis her dastardly weapon. A salt shaker. The horror! Wait, Ali, what are you doing? Shh! I wasn't sure how the salt shaker was going to help us in this situation, but I had to admit, the fairy looked pretty furious. I mean, salt was one fae protection, but fairy pain. Would something like that really work here? It was a very small, fairly small amount to use to take on an entire fairy hill, but Yuen had something about that. Wait! My bell! Come on, man! Suddenly, realization hit me. How did you bring that in here? My attention snapped back to the present, but one hand strayed to the pocket of my jacket. I mean, it was in my pocket this whole time, and I just walked in with it. I swiped it from my kitchen before we came, just in case. They probably hadn't been able to keep us from bringing things like that and things like that in with us, since we hadn't used one of their own gates. I gave Ellie a side long look, still unsure if something like small fairy mane would get us out of this. Reality didn't always play out the books and stories. The fairy gritted her teeth. Her eyes were trained on the salt in Allie's hand, and her entire body was tense. I wonder what would happen if I just... She tipped the sight... Salt sight. Salt very slightly, and a gas went up from the invisible horde around us. No! No, don't, don't do that! <laughs> oh, why not? I'm really curious what would happen. My fairy glared at Allie, hands clenching tightly at her sides. We're bound to count every single grain spilled. You know that, witchling. Well, this was working better than I thought. If that was the case, then if I waited for the right moment, and you can't do anything else until every single grain is counted, right? I wonder how many grains of salt are in this little thing. I'm sure it's several millions at least. I think we should find out. No! I can see the mania rising in her eyes as Ali tipped the shaker a little further. Or I can just take the lid off and stop it. Stop. Then why don't you make why don't we make a bargain? You let us go and let our friends go, and I don't doom you guys to scouring this place for every single grain of salt in here for the next year or so. Or maybe forever, since it might be hard to find them all. The fairy scowled at her, clearly not liking that idea, but she didn't seem ready to back down either in spite of the threat of compulsive salt counting. Oh well, you're lost. She oh shit. <laughs> she took the shaker and a few grains spilled out. A scream went up from the host, and before either of us could react, dozens of fairies poured from the shadows toward us. Allie! I lunged for her, but tiny hands tore at my hair, my face, and my skin. They grabbed my arms and yanked me back. Allie was swarm of fae as well, and I couldn't get to her. She flung the salt over the fairies, sending a spray of salt grains through the air. But it wasn't enough. One of the group caught up, caught it, clutching the shaker to its chest protectively. Others scram scrabbled on the ground, madly counting the salt that fell from the rest of re from the from <laughs> salt that fell. But the rest kept their grip on us, screaming and shouting, "Let go! No!" We couldn't afford to let them separate us now. I tried to pry myself away from them, but they pinned my arms behind my back and I couldn't twist away. Let me go! Let me! That's enough. Is it my changeling? I'm waiting for my changeling to come up and be like, Okay, you, you stop fucking around now. Everything instantly went quiet at the sound of that voice, except the murmur of a couple of pixies still counting out the greens of salt. Oh, it is! Look, it's me! Another figure materialized through the crowd of fairies, a very, very familiar form and face. I struggled against the fairies still holding my arms. Somehow her faces were still similar, though hers was framed by white hair instead of red, and her eyes were a sharp, icy blue instead of hazel. She was taller than me, which made, me, made her figure seem even more slight. And those horns, black, curved above her brow. Somehow, though, we'd never been face to face before, a name echoed in my head. R real? I'm quite surprised you retained the memory of my name after all this. It's not like I wanted to remember it. I see you've come thieving to our doorstep once again, Michiko Melody. We forgave you once, but I'm not sure you'll escape unscathed this time around. 
thieving. You're the thieves. I just came back to get the people I care about. You have your body back. Isn't that enough? No. No, it's not enough. Because I am very selfish. How could that ever be enough? Oh, and I have to end the episode off. Where? Where's her head? Oh, <laughs> I'm so confused where Arya put her head. She is like laying under her bed. True, it would never be enough for a human. You're greedy people who want everything handed to you as if you ever deserve more than what you have. Oops, I didn't mean to hit the next dialogue, but I'm not going to read that until like the next episode. I just want, I just, I just want to go back home. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Touch it, touch it.